Hello, Sawyer here, and welcome to Real Numbers, the show that discovers math by investigating solutions of real-world problems. In this episode, we are capping off a series of probability problems with one final puzzle, featuring a grandparent of unbounded generosity. Lucky you, your wonderful grandma has been secretly saving money for your college expenses. In particular, every Sunday for an unknown number of weeks, she has randomly chosen either a $1 bill or a $20 bill, 50-50 chance, and has put that bill into a piggy bank with your name on it. Last Saturday, she revealed to you that there were three $20 bills in the piggy bank, so far, but again, you don't know how many $1 bills there are. Then on Sunday, she put this week's bill into the piggy bank. Now on Monday, you reach in and pull out a randomly selected bill, and it turns out that bill is a 20. What is the chance that your grandma put a $20 bill in the piggy bank yesterday? Submit your answer below the video. Notice that prior to pulling any bill out of the piggy bank, the chance that grandma had put a $20 bill in on Sunday was exactly one half. But once we pull out a bill from the piggy bank and see it's a 20, we have new information that allows us to update our prior probability. Bayes' theorem states mathematically how to update prior probabilities. Let's use Bayes to solve the problem from last week's episode. There's a link to that episode in the description of this video. Evelyn was trying to use her knowledge about the passing and studying rates of test takers at the DMV to determine the probability that an applicant who had passed the exam had studied for it. We know that 60% of applicants have studied, 75% of applicants pass. If an applicant hadn't studied, there are only 50% to pass the exam. Note that this is a statement of conditional probability. The probability of pass given not study is one half. Now Evelyn finds out an applicant passed the exam and wants to know the probability that they studied. Notice that prior to finding out the applicant passed, Evelyn's probability for whether they studied would be the base rate of the entire population, 60%. But once she finds out that the applicant passed, she has new information that can update her prior probability. She now wants to calculate the probability of study given pass. By Bayes' theorem, probability of study given pass equals the probability of pass given study times the probability of study over the probability of pass. Evelyn already knows the probability of study and the probability of pass. So we just need to know the probability of pass given study. Here we can use the total pass rate plus the pass rate of the non-studiers to determine the pass rate of the applicants that have studied. The total pass rate, 75% or 3 quarters, must equal the weighted average of the pass rates of the studiers and non-studiers by the following probability logic. The probability of pass equals the probability of study and pass plus the probability of not study and pass. That's the probability of study times the probability of pass given study, plus the probability of not study times the probability of pass given not study. Plugging in all the numbers we know, 3 quarters equals 3 fifths times the probability of pass given study, plus 2 fifths times 1 half. And solving for the probability of pass given study gives 11 over 12. Okay, so it definitely pays to study. Now we can use the pass rate of the studiers to solve for the study rate of the passers. By Bayes, the probability of the study given pass equals the probability of pass given study times the probability of study over the probability of pass. That's 11 twelfths times 3 fifths over 3 fourths, or 11 fifteenths. So an arbitrary person that passed the written test at the DMV had an 11 fifteenths probability of studying beforehand. It turns out there's a slightly faster way to compute this by being clever about which events we choose to use in Bayes' theorem. If we apply it to A equals not study and B equals pass, we get a formula for the probability of not study given pass, where we conveniently already know all the values. Probability of not study given pass equals the probability of pass given not study times the probability of not study over the probability of pass. That's one half times two-fifths over three-fourths, which is four-fifteenths. This is saying that a random person who passed the written test had a four-fifteenths probability of not studying for it. But since the probability of not A equals one minus the probability of A, this same person must have had a one minus four-fifteenths or eleven-fifteenths probability of having studied. Agreement with our earlier calculation. Nice. 
Finally, let's just represent the applicant pool with these 100 dots. We know if we sort them into studiers and the non-studiers, we get a split of 60-40. Also, if we were to split them into who passed and who failed, we would get a 75-25 split. But now we want to split them up into four buckets, one for each combination of the labels. The last bit of information we have is that of the applicants that didn't study, only half passed. So we can split these 40 dots that make up the non-studiers into exactly 20 passes and 20 fails. Now from the 75-25 pass-fail split, we know that there are 55 more dots that all go above the pass-fail split and only five that go below it. This lets us arrange the 100 dots by the combination of labels. Now, if we were to take a random selection from an applicant that we know passed, it would be from one of the top two boxes. 55 of those 75 dots studied, representing that the 75% of the applicant pool that passed is made up of 55% that studied and passed, and 20% that didn't study and passed. Therefore, the probability that a passing applicant studied is 55% over 75%, or 11 fifteenths. Again, agreeing with our earlier calculation. Perfect. Okay, now that we've seen Bayes' theorem in action, let's try to use it on this episode's problem of the week. The piggy bank had three $20 bills and an unknown number of $1 bills on Saturday. On Sunday, your grandma put in a new bill 50-50, whether it was a one or a 20. Then on Monday, you pick a random bill out of the piggy bank and get a 20. What's the probability that your grandma had added a $20 bill to the piggy bank on Sunday? Submit your solution below. You can also submit mathematical ideas or questions that the problem inspired, and those could show up on future episodes of Real Numbers. Next episode, we will switch to thinking about geometry. Until then, happy solving! <laughs>